broadcasting from Woodstock, Georgia. Welcome to Soul Solutions, a show where we overcome our fears and our limiting beliefs. I'm your host, author, and certified life coach, Terry Kozlowski. Hello, Warriors. Awareness is the greatest cause for transformation. Are you looking to respond with love in all situations? Do you need help, like my coaching services, to shine your light? If so, you can check out the free resource I have to help you stay present and aware. The link is in the show notes. Mindfulness is the gateway to transforming your life. Now let's start this week's episode. Episode 200. Seven simple methods to fill your life with peace. You don't have to spend a fortune on a wellness resort or sit on a hilltop to achieve inner peace. Setting aside time for relaxation is great, but when you most need calm, it's amid the hectic pace of daily life. The awkward situation where your phone rings and your purse spills its contents over the floor while you're waiting in line at the pharmacy. It's at that moment when you are fighting the need to blurt forth a string of obscenities which you need to achieve inner serenity. Many people search for situations that facilitate inner tranquility. It's actually everyone possesses the serene, sympathetic, profound awareness. Your own vast reservoir of tranquility and compassion within you, but you need to develop the ability to access it. For people with traumatic pasts and those who live or work in toxic environments, peace can be difficult. There's no denying that relationship between the mind and the body. Your body is in overdrive when your mind is ruminating. Even though you cannot resolve every disagreement, you may gradually bring about inner harmony. Being at peace enables you to understand your mission. It enables you to put aside your tiredness with the here and now and make wiser choices and experience life to the fullest. You have peace inside you, and here are seven methods that I was able to use to bring peace into my everyday life. Number one, slow down so peace can enter your life. The first step is easy. Slow down. Maybe it's not so easy. When you're sitting at a stoplight on your way to work, Really look at the glorious sunrise or admire the distinctive skyline as you crest the hill of the city you work in. Each day you are given ample opportunities to be in awe of the beautiful world around you, but you need to slow down and take notice. You need to be fully present in that moment. Not mulling about the past or worried about the future. These are peace killers and only cause undue stress. Slowing down reduces the stress you have in your life as you consciously refocus your attention on what's truly important. When you slow down, you can get clarity. Only when you are mindful and in the present moment can you declutter your mindful of thoughts. As you get clear on what you want and define your goals, you can then make clear, decisive decisions to move forward. Slowing down has significant benefits to your body and your mind. Number two, make space for peace by decluttering. Clutter is a negative and makes you feel bad when you see it. Disorder reflects your internal self. The messier your home, the messier your internal life is. Why is it when you take something out, you don't put it away? It can't be that you don't have the time because it takes longer to search for something than it does to put it away so you can easily find it the next time you need it. Untidiness is distracting. Maybe this is why your home is disorganized. Perhaps you want distraction so you don't need to deal with the matters of your life that need to be dealt with. A few years ago, I declared my entire house, or at least those areas I was responsible for, and in doing so, other parts of my life became organized. What surrounds you reflects what's inside you. Declutter so you have room for peace. Number three, set boundaries to maintain peace. Setting boundaries can be an arduous process if you're, like me, a recovering people pleaser. As a child of an alcoholic, I learned at a very young age that keeping my mother calm 
was in the best interest of the household. But years later, I was still allowing her to wreak havoc in my emotional life by taking her phone calls when she was drinking because I was trying to honor my mother. I came to realize I was to honor her, but not at the cost of my peace or health. I stopped taking her calls, changed to an unlisted phone number, remember those, and had less anxiety in my life when the phone rang. Saying no to someone is an act of compassion for all involved. Before making a conscious decision to only do those things that I enjoyed or spend time with people I liked, I did a lot of things so people would like me. Then I would complain a negative act about my helping others, which did not honor the service I did for the other person. If your heart is not into going to an event with someone or helping them move, then let them know you're not available. This way, you're not taking your time to dishonor your service by spreading negative energy. Number four, take time for yourself. My husband worked the midnight shift with rotating his days off. The upside of this schedule is that we each got alone time. We liked our alone time. He can work on projects and not be interrupted or play his bass guitar full blast without bothering me. I can read or write or take an online class without feeling I'm not spending time with him. It worked out perfectly for us. His schedule changed and we both now are on the same shift. Yeah, lots of togetherness. We have actually discussed this and have agreed that we still both need our alone time to pursue those activities that the other does not take part in. For example, I will continue to go to book club as well as some classes. This means that he will have time at home without me, so it works out for both of us. Alone time is an important part of self-care plans. It allows you time to recharge and reflect on where you want to go in life. A weekly bubble bath, a monthly girls or guys night out, a creative day are all ways that you can recharge so that you can continue to give from a place of fulfillment instead of pulling from a place of emptiness. Time for oneself is important to finding lasting peace. Number five, let go to attract peace. Holding on to the past does not allow the present to be lived and peace only occurs in the now. Whether it's old material possessions or negative memories that keep you in the past, the only way forward is to let them go. Releasing the memories, hurt feelings, and pain first requires that you take responsibility for your current situation. You made decisions and choices that got you in this place in life, and if you blame others, you have given up your power to change and therefore your power to regain your peace. Once you have taken responsibility, you are empowered to consciously choose to change your mindset so that you can begin to attract the peace you want in your life. Peace is a positive state of being. This means that you have to choose to feel happy. Feelings are not thrust upon you by others. You can choose how you feel. No one makes you angry. You choose to get mad at them for something they did. You could easily have believed that they were being senseless and forgive them. Why give them the power to take away your peace? No one on this planet has the power to take my peace unless I give it to them. And why would anyone choose to give up their peace of mind? Number six, be present to experience peace. As previously stated, peace only happens in the present moment because that is where you live your life from. Your life is happening at this instant in time. Your past is gone and the future is what you are currently making of it. You cannot add peace to the past and you cannot cannot propel it to your future. Peace happens at this present moment. For more on being present, I recommend Eckhart Tolle's excellent book, The Power of Now. When you are being present, you are fully conscious and aware of what is happening at this moment in time that you find yourself in. You are not mulling over the conversation you had yesterday, which is in the past, with your boss, nor are you worried about the next meeting in the future you are having later this week. At this moment, I am having a podcast and only thinking about writing and providing you with this information for this show to help you find peace based on what is working for me. This moment, you are listening to the podcast. Thank you. 
and learning simple methods that you can do to fill your life with peace. The present is here in the now, fully aware and conscious. Number seven, be authentic and peaceful. Authenticity is when you make a conscious decision to be yourself. Not what others want you to be, not what others expect you to be, but what you truly are, your genuine self. When you decide just to be yourself and not be concerned with others' opinions, peace engulfs you. Peace is the gift from the divine. When you are truly yourself, the divine within you unites with the universe, and that connection is part of your true state of being. Peace is meant to be a part of your daily life, if you allow it. I have spent most of my life with incessant chattering and negativity from my ego inside my head. This is the voice that tells you you are unworthy, which is a lie. The egoic voice is the one that tries to take away your internal divine peace. When I started taking yoga, it helped my meditation practice and I could turn off the babbling of my ego. When I wrote in my journal about this, I realized how much peace I felt day in and day out despite the normal daily tasks and annoyances that occur. I also realized that peace had always been there, but I was not focused on it. I was choosing to focus on the stress and anxiety that I was creating. Choose to be authentically you. Choose peace. Moving forward with inner peace. You may be more resilient and emotionally stronger as you navigate life shifting ways by making progress toward achieving mental peace. Although everyone can achieve more mental and emotional calm, it might not happen right away. Throughout this process, knowing that patience is a crucial component and treating yourself with respect and compassion may make a world of difference. Joy and tranquility are intimately related. Peace is finding stability and harmony. Joy is to cover this. Joy and tranquility are intimately related. Peace is finding stability and harmony. Joy is discovering bliss. Your heart is open and your mind at ease when you're happy, allowing you to be the finest version of yourself. It's unnecessary for a busy life to be stressful. You can stop the day from robbing you of your energy by making little additions, subtractions, and modifications to some of your everyday activities. In the same way, you may improve the quality of your days, months, and years by redefining your thinking. As you become more mindful of the clutter in your life and become conscious about your mindset, you can adjust the course of your life. Do you need support in overcoming the clutter in your life? Do you want a strategy to help you create a more peaceful life? If so, please contact me at terrykozlowski.com and we can put together an action plan for you to be authentically you and for you to know that every day is peaceful. Thanks for listening to Soul Solutions with Terry Kozlowski. If you'd like the show and want to learn more, check out terrykozlowski.com where you can find the links to everything we talked about in this episode. Please subscribe to the show so you'll never miss an episode as we overcome our fears and our limiting beliefs.